I want to first off uh, start by defining what is Eastern wisdom. <laughs> uh, when I first um, heard of Eastern wisdom, like when I was first starting my self-help extravaganza exploration, I just heard of Buddhism, and I thought everything was like Buddhists. Mm. I, you know, really didn't know a lot about um, the Eastern cultures, yeah. and uh, I never heard of the Gita. So let's talk about what. Uh, what are the basic writings that um, well, let, they come let, from? You mentioned Buddhism. Let, let's mm. uh, let's talk about that. Um, Buddhism has had a huge impact on the West, mainly mm. because they've actively uh, sought to educate people on mm. what Buddhism is. Mm -hmm. And so you see Buddhism centers pretty much all over the country, all over the world, and it's great. Mm -hmm. um, Vedanta or another the kind of the an older school of uh, that originates from eastern wisdom traditions has not been that active mm. although it has had a long presence in the u.s and actually um it's almost that that if when you hear it you say oh i've heard that before but um we're trying to change that we're going to raise the awareness of yeah. this rich rich philosophy and actually buddhism arose out of vedanta yes so um and those eastern tradition the 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 foundation so where does that um where's that original can we go back to how long ago <laughs> let's get let's, yeah let's get on in our time machine if we go back to india or, or that the Indus Valley, as uh, the uh, the scholars and anthropologists call it, the, it goes back uh, a few thousand years BC mm -hmm. or B BCE before the Common Era, which means we're going to we're going back about four thousand years. Wow! Um, and at that time, the Indus Valley was the the seat of this philosophical movement which was starting to look inward and uh, the seers would report on what they were finding through their investigation of human awareness human mind mm. the human mind so they were meditating basically yes and they would start to write these songs and they were written in song form mm. um these sutras, these threads of knowledge, that they w were then passed on to others from teacher to student and were memorized. So they were verbally trans... Verbally, uh, in song form, transmitted from teacher to student mm. throughout generations. And we don't know how far that tradition goes back, uh, but we can only imagine it goes back a... Um, probably another few thousand years mm. because to develop that kind of culture and that kind of knowledge takes time mm -hmm. and it takes community and effort and all that good stuff but anyway so it's it's we want to see the these wisdom traditions in the context of they they are our human legacy mm. I know, you know, we, we, we respect that they come from, from what is now India, but really it's part of our being human, mm -hmm. right? That humans were interested in what was going on in their mind, how did the mind work, why were they here? What happens after I die? All the, all the big questions that... Why do I dream at night? Yes, that, that philosophy always asks, or that little children always ask, why is the sky blue? <laughs> Why do I dream at night? All mm -hmm. these things. They were already working on those those questions and developing them as as philosophies. Mm -hmm. Now we we approach them as philosophy because there are religious overtones to uh, these practices, but we're focusing more on the philosophy mm -hmm. because philosophy allows us to ask questions and to to not only not just accept things because they're written down mm -hmm. it, it allows us to ask well is this true and how mm -hmm. can i experience that mm -hmm. myself right. so it's it's a great way to 
to experience the wisdom traditions through their philosophy. Mm.